it in there, there we go now we're live guys welcome back to another episode of explain it with caroline and my co-host ingrid hernandez uh thank you guys for showing up i do want to just say we are doing this to help people across the country learn how to get involved in real estate um things outside of real estate that we find passion in but our real goal is to help as many people as possible so we have no ads on here this is something that we do on our own accord if you guys could please like this video on YouTube, share it with other people. Our goal is to help as many people as possible. Um, and today we're going to have our special guest on here, Matthew Potter. But with that being said, Ingrid, I know we've been busy. We were just down at a mastermind and I didn't have my voice last week. So, so good to see you again. Um, what's good? What's new in life? Let's see. My Round Rock property is under contract. I know that, that was, that's that been a, a sore spot. It, uh, it The hits keep on coming with it, though. Lots of uh, issues that we have to try to overcome uh, through title and such. Um, but working through it, uh, I think one of the things I was telling you is that once you actually start taking action, Mm -hmm. And you come through like you, you have these experiences of like unexpected stress. Um, you get like really stressed out. Sorry. Thank you, my love. My, water, my daughter just brought me my water. You're live on YouTube. <laughs> and um, uh, that's so funny. And, and but now that I'm going through all these problems with Round Rock, I feel like it's going to be really hard for anybody to really shut me down because uh, my heart rate doesn't even go up now. I'm like, oh, look, another problem. Okay. <laughs> it's, I have, I have a new, I have a new baseline of stress. Comfortably so, numb, some might yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Well, I see that Matthew's in the back uh, now, so I guess we can bring him up. I know you've been working with Matthew for a while. I've seen Matthew speak before, so I'm excited to ask him. About I him. went to high school with Matthew Pot. What? Yeah, yes, we're both really old, but no. we, don't show it. we don't show it. Not at all. Not at all. You guys look great. Well, let's bring Matthew up here. Matthew, thank you for jumping on here. Welcome to the Explain It podcast. First What's going on? Can, can you all hear me? Yeah, good. yeah. Perfect, perfect. Maybe Ingrid doesn't show it. I, I got a little bit of white. I got a little bit of snow going on over here. That's why I highlighted my hair, because uh, that way it's harder to tell. Is that blonde? Is that gray? Uh, I don't have that issue anymore. <laughs> you guys are looking incredible. I could not tell. 32, right? 32. Same same neck of the woods as me. We'll go um, that, that sounds good, you know. Well, plus a dime. We're, we're good. Plus a dime. I like there are quite a few people in here. So, um, Matthew, I know you were the short sale king. I did not reach out to you. We angered and I were looking at something earlier. She sent me your contact, but I was drowning in follow up. So, if we have time, I'm, gonna, I'm going to ask you online about a deal. But okay. before we get started, I've seen you talk. I know you're local to, to the Phoenix market. Um, and it looks like from my research I've done on social media, you have about 17 children. How do you stay on top of everything with all that you do right now? I do. Um, I got a starting five plus a couple subs. Um, <laughs> no, I have, I have five that I legally claim on my taxes. I have my teenage daughter's best friend. Um, my eldest, his girlfriend actually lives with us as well. And she's in the process of getting her real estate license. So she's joining our team. Um, more than anything, like I've just always been an extremely high driven person. So for me, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, okay, like my grandmother taught me how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Like it doesn't matter how much you got in front of you. You just got to dive in and start going. And that's kind of how I'm able to get it done. Like literally right before this, um, I was pressure washing the driveway. Like no joke. I literally was. While I, while I was sitting there putting together a $2 million deal for one of our sellers. Nice. <gasps> is it is it the beautiful it, house? It is. Oh my God. I yes. really wanted to go, sh like I, I really should have taken the time to go walk that house, put some content in there. So, so pretty. It's, it is... Definitely. The pictures, the pictures are nice. It didn't do it any justice. Like when you walk in there, you're like, whoa, okay. Like, yeah. I know that the furniture alone in here has to be worth like at least a mil, like no, no exceptions. Like it yeah. has to. 
So Matthew had a really amazing listing in Gilbert that had like ridiculous amount of shares, including for myself, because it was just an amazing, amazing property. So I'm so excited that you got uh, a buyer. So that's great. Like, you know, congrats. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Matthew, you're a realist, you're an agent and you, do you fix and flip yourself? Uh, I do. I do some fix and flip. I kind of stepped away from it when the market went cuckoo bananas, just I think because most of us have. Yeah. One of our part, we partner with a custom home builder on our flips. So mm -hmm. luckily for us, we get everything at cost, but we also split profits 50, 50, um, which I feel is a very fair um, uh, arrangement. But with the market getting a little bit volatile, they were like, yeah, let's just take a step back until it gets a little bit more, just a little bit less murky. Uh, that's all they're looking for. You know, it's, it, it's kind of hit or miss with a lot of homes right now. It's like you put like a quality product out there on the market and it just like, it just sits, even if it's priced right. And then it's like something that you're like, man, this, this might be a little bit difficult to move oh yeah, hey, here's three offers in two days. And I'm like, wait, what? What do you mean? <laughs> like, that doesn't seem normal. So it's it's definitely been one of those things like we just kind of took a step back and, and said, hey, we're, we're going to go ahead and um, regroup, reanalyze, and then, you know, we'll hit the ground running based on the new data points that are there. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Ingrid, I have some questions for him, but if you have anything that you, I have, I have some lined up just because we're, I figured we were going to be talking a lot about short sales. So I wanted to break that down for everybody, but do you have anything before I start rattling off mine? So Matthew, um, just so that the audience knows who you are, um, give us like your, you know, three minute spiel of like how you got started and, and why did you start focusing on short sales now hedge funds? Like what, what brought you to that if you're able to condense it a little? I'll condense it as much as I can. Um, so back during the Great Recession, I graduated from ASU with a realty studies degree. Hey, hey Forkham Devils. Um, so I graduated and I had an internship with, I want to say it was Cushman and Wakefield, maybe Colliers. I don't know. It was something for land development. Well, of course, the market went like this and... I got a call from a good friend of mine that was like, yo, I got a job. And I'm like, cool. Like, are they hiring? Because I have bills to pay. And she's like, I think you would do great here. Come in for an interview on Tuesday. So I did. I had no idea what the job was for. I walked in there. I still didn't know what the job was for, but I was hired on the spot. And the guy's like, dude, you'll do great. And I'm like, what the hell am I going to, what, what am I doing here? And he's like, you're going to negotiate short sales. And I'm like, I don't even know what that is. And he's like, here's a handbook. We'll see you next Monday. And I'm like, okay. So I went home, I learned and I'm like, oh, this seems pretty easy. Like this isn't too difficult. And then like come to find out it's a lot more difficult than I originally thought. And then all of a sudden I started realizing kind of how the bank viewed everything. And once I kind of unlocked that, it, everything started falling into place. So like me, my current transaction coordinator, um, my, my wife, who was not my wife at the time, we all worked at that company together and we ended up doing a bunch of short sales with them. And then we broke off and started our own company. And then that morphed into us making our real estate team, but we still did the short sales and then we still do short sales to this day. Um, and because of that, it opened some doors for some of our hedge fund clients because they bought a lot of our short sales back in the day when the market was really low. So it's been like a really, really weird 15 year trip there where I'm just like, I look back on it and I'm like, man, I can't believe it's actually been 15 years of doing this. This is pretty wild. And then um, I get asked this all the time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there so that everybody knows. It is not a typo or anything like that. Yes, I've done over 18,000 short sales since 2007. So it's, you're going to be hard pressed to find anyone that knows more about short sales than me. And I, I just like being able to be a resource for everybody else. Like if there's something I can do to help you with a short sale. Um, and so everybody knows we do them in all 50 states. I've done them in everywhere. I've done them in Hawaii, Alaska. Um, I'm doing one in Maine right now, like on a farm. 
<laughs> I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> so we do them everywhere. So by all means, feel free to reach out and we are happy to help you guys with it. We actually might have one in Washington for you, but part of the, uh, the problem is that the sheriff's auction is just days away and we're like, uh, but it's not, it's the HOA issue. It's not, it's not the mortgage. So gotcha. we're trying to, I'm like, how do you stop a foreclosure, uh, with the sheriff? So it's interesting. Uh, it's definitely interesting. I mean, it's, it's similar to just a mortgage servicer of you just have to have it make sense to them. I mean, that's really what it comes down to technically, depending on the situation, um, you can always reinstate it or clear it, you know, clear what's there. But obviously that comes with a certain level of inherent risk right. as well. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like, okay, cool. You did that. And then somebody could be like, Oh, well have a great day. Like I'm not going to work with you on anything. So yeah. um, I found more often than not usually like, Hey, here's a, here's a purchase contract with a settlement statement that shows like, look, y'all are going to get paid and taken care of that usually keeps most of the lenders and or HOAs, because yes, HOAs in a lot of places have the power to foreclose. Um, usually they'll look at that and they'll want to push it forward where they'll say, okay, we'll extend that out so that you guys can go ahead and rectify it and close it up. So let's say we want to buy that property, but the only way we can buy it is through a short sell scenario. We can, we can submit a short sell offer and then start that process. Correct. Yes. Mm. But how would the HOA get paid when they're in, they're, they're not in first position? So usually what happens on that is there's certain states that are what are called super lean states for HOA, which gives mm -hmm. them the power to be able to foreclose. So one of them is the most predominant for this. And we saw it a lot in 07 through about 2013, 2014 is Florida, like Florida, like, some of the condo associations were like, yo, we're just going to foreclose on everybody. Like we don't even care now. Um, and I actually had one where the HOA foreclosed for like $3,000 and like literally the, somebody bought the house for $3,000, like this condo that's on Miami beach. And I'm like, in retrospect, looking at it, I'm like, dang, I really wish I would have known to like go buy that. Like I really Washington wish I would. Is a super lean state because I'm a bus Washington, is, Washington is a super lean state. So thirty grand auction. <laughs> there, there. I looked at one. There's one in Chandler for seven thousand dollars by Ingrid. Yep. There over is. by my house. I didn't foreclose yeah. them. No, right. no, but over by Ingrid's house in, in Chandler. I was going to say Ingrid, pay your HOA. <laughs> <laughs> um, not her. Not her. But no, yeah. with this, with the super liens, you do have the power through. It's similar to like a property tax lien in a way. Mm -hmm. Um, they do have the power to foreclose and they can extinguish a first or second mortgage that's there. It's a lot of people don't understand that that's a niche that actually exists, but it is. No, something, yeah. And it's, it's one of those things. Like I always tell people do a lot of research before you go into that. But like, for example, um, my mom owns um, fourplex over on the west side of town. Um, mm -hmm. It's a great cash cow. Like, God bless her for it. She bought it when the market was absolutely just bleh for like 103,000 and it's worth like 700 G's now. And like each unit rents for like 1,200 a month. And I'm like, good for you. I'm like, good for you. Enjoy your retirement. Like, just enjoy it. Actually, good for um, you, Matthew, because then she can take care of herself. Hundred <laughs> percent, like literally hundred percent. She's like, you know, I'm retired and I'm making about eight thousand a month. I'm like, I need you to know that that's more than most people make, like working. Like, I need you to understand that. But the cool thing about that fourplex is she's actually the HOA president because she got so sick of people not paying their dues and like a bunch of stuff that was going on there. Uh -huh. So she became the president because my mom's just the type of person that's like, yeah, I'm going to get things done. Um, so sounds she like did you are too. It sounds like it's the part of way. <laughs> yes. It, it literally runs, it runs in our DNA. Um, so what happened was they actually ended up foreclosing on somebody there for, I want to say it was like 22,000 in HOA dues, which like, don't get me wrong. Like, it's 22 G's like that's a fair amount of money, but 
but somebody picked that thing up for clearing the HOA. Like, had it not been a conflict of interest, I I would have gone after it, but I didn't. So I was like, eh, it's all right. There's plenty of, yeah, for <laughs> real. Like, in, in the future, like, I'm just going to be like, yo, I can't, but here you go. Mm-hmm. Um, so that ended up, that ended up uh, happening. And, like, they have a very, very, very healthy HOA now. Like, it's... They run it, they run it uh, very healthy. Nobody's delinquent because like, who wants to lose, who wants to lose that? Like, I I want to jump in just because I know we have a lot of new people on here. I'm streaming on Instagram. We have 50 people on um, YouTube and Facebook, everybody watching us. And there's a lot of new people that are on our channel. So I just want to make sure um, everybody's understanding. So please, if you guys are watching live uh, with us, feel free to ask questions. We'll get to them. So I want to roll back. With that HOA lien, you said that it extinguishes everything else. That, that it, Can you go into more detail for all of our new people on here? So it does depend on the state and how it's written. Like, so for okay. example, in Florida, it will just wipe everything out, similar to a that's property right. tax lien. Like, hey, you but, got and that's it. The super lien state. So you could just Correct. look, Google like, hey, is my state a super lien state for Correct. HOAs? Correct. Yes. Like a super lien state for HOA. Um, so real quick before I forget, because uh, you had asked me with regards to like submitting a short sale, how would the HOA get taken care of? Yeah. In a situation where it's a super lean state, the mortgage servicer, you know, Wells Fargo, whoever, um, they will know that it's a super lean state that they've lean, that they've loaned in one. They order a prelim title. So if they see a lien on there, they, they literally ask us, how much is owed to the HOA and prorated out 60 days and we're paying them in full. Like they don't argue. There's no, Hey, try to get them to go lower. They don't care. They pay them in full because they don't want to get their mortgage wiped out. So they're like, cool, not a problem. You're going to get paid in full. Gotcha. Okay. Taking note here. That makes sense. Yeah. Like somebody just said, what does super lean mean? So oh, great. I'm glad we went over that. Um, okay. So, Perfect. Thank you for explaining that. Um, Ingrid, did you have any? So Keith asked the question, is there a right of redemption like in a tax sale? So let's say it goes through that that process of auction. And then um, how do we um, like, okay, so let's go through the scenario in Washington, just because it's the current scenario. Um, Whereas uh, and in fact, I think I even sent you a lead in Florence. Their auction was supposed to be a couple of days ago. Um, I think that one, was that Florence or Casa Grande? Casa Grande. I'm sorry. It was I was, was going to say, don't you go confuse me now. Uh-huh. Okay. You are not, not going to confuse me today. <laughs> yeah, so so let's say for the, the, the property in Washington that we're working through right now, uh, right. HOA lien, in order to clear it, we have to pay close to 13000 on that HOA lien, but let's say it goes to auction and I'm like, I'm just, I'll just buy that auction. 13,000, it's a super lien for their a- HOAs in that state. Okay, I have 13,000, um, th- then what happens? Like, do, is there any right with the buyer or excuse me, the the current seller? Is there like, do they have like three months of being it able does, to- It does depend on the state. Like for example, in Arizona, there's no right of redemption here. Florida, no right of redemption. Um, some of them, and like, I don't know off the top of my head with Washington state, of course, like the one where this is happening. Um, I don't know if there's a right of redemption there. I do know, like this one just sticks in my head because, um, it was like a horrible short sale that I was doing years and years ago in, in, uh, Michigan and the negotiator at the bank was like, we're sending it to foreclosure. Ha ha. Like, you know, it's gonna, you know. I'm closing the file out and I'm like, you do know there's a six month right of redemption. So you might as well just keep the, you know, the file open. And the guy was like, that that's not true. And then like I CC'd his manager in and his manager was like, just approve the short sale. Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, Hey, thanks. So like, I know for a fact that Michigan has a right of redemption. Um, But with that, yes, there is a certain period of time kind of similar to like a property tax lien where you can come in and you can bring it current, but it is state specific. Some states, it's just, you're wiped out, you're done, you've lost title, it's transferred via, you know, a, a sheriff's deed. 
and that's it. And then there's other ones where they're like, hey, you know, you have three months, six months. I think the longest that I've ever seen is one year. Um, and I don't recall which state it is, but a lot of those are kind of like your states back east, like your New Jersey, New York, uh, Massachusetts. Those are usually the ones because they go through like a judicial foreclosure process. So it's a li- it's a little bit um, it's a little bit different for them versus us being a trustee sale, you know, state where it's like, hey, you missed three payments. Here's your schedule foreclosure sale date. Have a great day. Yeah, you know, like we're we're really quick here in the West. <laughs> it's more systematic. Where on the on the East Coast with the judicial, there's actually like a due process within court, Correct. sort of thing. Yeah, and like literally, like you can go to court and you can be like, "Oh no, I don't agree with this," and it like postpones your foreclosure for like three months just saying that. Yeah, and it's like, okay, like <laughs> can't do that in Arizona. They're like, "Oh, that's cool. You don't agree with it? Like tough. We're yeah. taking your house. You can make your payments." <laughs> Right. Very cool. Well, this is so, so cool to know. Go ahead, Carolyn. It looks really good for me, but I'm just going to say again, because we're explaining it, I have chat GPT open as well. And I was asking these questions. So I was like, all right, let me just see which one of these is actually like super lean state. So just so you guys know, chat GPT, boom, Washington state is a super lean state. Um, hey, hey, I was right. it, <laughs> there you go. So I was like, what is, so people are asking, what is this? Let me zoom in so everybody can see it a little better. So what Caroline's saying is you can stop coming to our podcast. You can just ask that GPT. <laughs> no, yeah, just go straight to chat GPT and, and good luck guessing to ask deeper questions. But no, I mean, I, this is a great tool to use. I think it's really helpful and it's only as smart as the, uh, the questions you ask it. So um, Matthew, thank you for explaining that. I, I'm one of those people, I, I'm a community person. I want to be able to, okay, thank you. Let me go dig into a little more. I'm going to come back and ask Matthew another Ooh, question. She's, he, she was trusting, but verifying. Uh, exactly. hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad that I'm glad that she did. I mean, I will be the first one to admit, my wife might agree with this, that I am not always perfect. I mean, I'm pretty close, but I'm not always perfect. Every <laughs> now and then I, I, I forget something or omit something, but no, yeah. it's, like I said, it's a, it's a little unique caveat that not a lot of people know about. And I noticed something on the chat GPT uh, part that was there. um, And it's similar to Arizona. There are specific requirements that you have to hit to be Mm -hmm. able to foreclose as an HOA in a super lean. And it's like a certain amount of assessments. It's a certain dollar amount. Like it's not just like, Oh, you didn't pay your HOA, your quarterly HOA. We're foreclosing on you today. Like Mm -hmm. there's a, there is a process. It's something where you're probably, honestly, in most instances, probably at least a year, if not more, behind before they'll actually initiate the process. Gotcha. And then I, I just want to tell you guys, chat GPT is not perfect. I said, who is the short sale king? And I said, it doesn't know. So it doesn't have <gasps> information on there, Matthew. Oh, yeah. so I, chat GPT is not perfect, okay? We just got to keep that in mind. Hmm. I'm, I'm going to have to go in there and, and plant some seeds. <laughs> so, Victoria, uh, you asked a really great question, and it's something that um, Caroline has done a really good job about uh, instigating some action in the communities we're in. And so you asked, how would we look at properties that are in a super lean community? Um, so I'm going to ask that a little bit differently because it, it's not necessarily a community, but it's either your state or county. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, what would what would you recommend, um, Matt, and, and then I'll then turn it over to Caroline, if you knew you were in a super lean community and you're an investor and you want to leverage that scenario, what, what would you recommend to instigate some leads to kind of help you get some them deals, some deals done? For me, there's a couple ways that I would probably look at this and dissect it and attack it. So the first thing that I would look at is what are the areas that either A, I want to buy in or B, areas that I want to invest in, or I know people are investing in. So like, for example, if it's Miami beach, a lot of people will buy there for Airbnbs or whatever. I would go at that point, I would contact those specific like HOAs or the management companies and just ask them like, Hey, do you guys have anything that's coming up on, um, you know, delinquent HOA that you guys are foreclosing on? If so, who do you use to foreclose? Like what, what law firm can I contact to get details? And once you have that law firm, like, I know it sounds like, I don't know, maybe we're like taught to not trust lawyers, but lawyers are an amazing source of information, especially when you're kind of looking at things like this, 
you can go have a conversation with them and they may say, hey, yeah, um, we have four that are coming up here's the information and you might even be able to talk to the seller before then and get it before it goes to the HOA tax lien sale. So like that, for me, that's one of the things that I would do. I mean, I know obviously you can pull data from all different places. You can get it from, you know, there's literally everything. There's privy, there's prop stream, there's batch, um, yeah, all of the there's, there's batch leads. One of the other things, cause it's, it's going to be recorded wherever it is talk to a local title company, like just talk to a local title company that's in that area or somebody that you have a relationship with at one and see if they can help pull the data for you because they may have more accurate data than anyone else. Mm -hmm. and, and how about you, Caroline? Cause I know you, you recently gave some feedback to team, to, to folks about where they can get these, uh, these types yeah. of I have, and I almost don't want to give it up because I made these people reach out to me like five or six times before I oh. gave it. I'm going to, I'm going to say it with this caveat. I waited if people want to work with us and like potentially part, like be a part of our team. I am a dog. I learned this from pace. I've learned this from other people in sales. You have to be relentless in your follow-up, especially with these people in pre foreclosure or about to lose your house to an auction because a lot, I mean, I'm sure you've maybe dealt with people before Matthew. I know Ingrid, you and I have where they're in denial, uh, mindset manor house. And they're like, nope, it's all taken care of. I don't, I, you know, it's not a big deal. So I'm going to say this for everybody as a blanket statement. Don't go after this. If you're going to be shy, get shiny object syndrome and you're not going to follow through with the leads. So I, I'm giving that up front because I was not giving this information out of how to find the details until I had people reach out to me five or six times after I ignored them to see if they could actually like hang with me and deal with um, rejection because that's what it comes down to. At the end of the day, like I've been going, I, I, don't, I know you haven't been watching me because you're doing other things, but I've been going live in the middle of the day using our Astro Blaster calling agents. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just so, like I'm getting bored and it's hard and this it's it can be monotonous. And I know you guys have been in real estate longer than me Guys, we're here to explain it, but you have to be resilient and relentless and be willing to get, you know, punched in the face a bunch before you potentially get a deal. So um, I will I will give you a nugget in here and I'm willing to help people, but I you have to be a go getter. There's my Instagram at the Caroline Kane. You guys can reach out to me. I already gave you the recipe. I'm going to ignore you a lot to see if you're going to follow up, but you can go directly to your county um, and you can just I'm going to give you the recipe, call your county, ask them where to find that information and then pull it from there. If you guys need more help after that, I will help you even further, but I gave you a nugget. Take That's it plenty. That's plenty. Okay. So, um, in the comments, I've given the feedback that Matt, um, gave you, which was a really great nugget. The other is DM Caroline because, uh, our, our structure is JVing and I, and I, Matthew, I think works some similarly specifically with some leads, uh, meaning if you guys are really going to go after it, we would love to partner with you. So, um, DM Caroline, if you want to know more details than what she said about getting some of these leads, and we will be happy to work with you once you have, um, once you've tried, uh, to, to find these, these opportunities. So, so Mr. Short Sell King, um, uh, give us, give us a story, like give us a story of like, what was one of like the most satisfying short sales that, that you've had to work. I mean, you, you only have 18,000 transactions to go through. Um, I, I only but, have a couple to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's two and it was the first short sale that I ever got done was one of the most satisfying and the main reason why, and to this day, I still remember this guy's combination of loans, who they were serviced by. I mean, honestly, if I really wanted to, I could probably recall his loan numbers. But this was a this was a property down in Florida. He had been with seven other people at the company that I got hired on, and nobody could get it done. And I got it done in six weeks from the time I was hired to the time I got it approved. And then my lovely wife, Nicole, um, she ended up coming into that company as the closer. So she handled everything once we had it approved and she got it closed, even though there was a hurricane the day before closing. So like, it was just a wild ride. Like it was like, it was one of those. And like, 
when I got handed that file, like everybody in the office was laughing. They're like, ha ha ha. And then I'm like, I don't understand why they're like, dude, it's the file that won't die. And like the homeowner was the nicest dude too. Like he lived in Michigan and literally just like the nicest dude on the planet. And he's like, I think that you're going to be the guy that gets it done. And I'm like, dude, do not put that kind of pressure on me. Like I don't need that in my life. So I did, I ended up getting that one done. Um, I still remember to this day, the purchase price was 135,000. Like I remember that, like all of it. His first mortgage was with ASC, which is Wells Fargo subprime servicing company. And his second mortgage was with a defunct lender servicer that was named Wilshire. So I still remember that one. The other one that sticks with me, and it's it's technically two transactions. Um, we had a seller, it was here in Phoenix. He had 17 liens on his properties. So he had like a condo and then he had his primary in Chandler. And this was back in like 2010 when like nothing sold for more than like $30,000 in Arizona because that's just what the market was. And like his property in Chandler was like 450,000. So like clearly like this dude's like rich. I was like, oh my God. And like, I look at the title report and I'm like, how in the hell am I ever going to get this done? Because I mean, it's, there's a business loan. There was like an SBA loan on there. There was a federal tax lien. Like it was just a wild ride. And like, we ended up, cause both of the properties were with different banks. So we ended up getting one of the banks to agree to allow like the third and fourth mortgage over here. And then we were doing the business loans on this property over here because there was more meat. And like, we went all the way through and like had it perfectly done and, and got it approved, got both of them approved. Both of the buyers were ready to go forward. We got it closed. And I was like, holy crap. And this dude, like to this day, that guy is still like, I'm never going to buy another house. Like after the one that I bought after this, he's like, but if I do hundred percent, I'm coming to you. And I'm like, I'm going to hold you to that. I swear I will check the tax records. If you go use someone else, I'm going to come to your house. And like, dude, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm going to kink your hose. I, I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, those, those are definitely the two biggest ones that have stuck with me. Like there's a lot, but those are the two biggest ones for me. So you, I'm going to jump in. So you, how often do you get return customers because you've helped them out in a short sale? Like how much business has come from you from helping somebody out with a problem? A lot. Um, I have learned, and this is probably one of the fattest nuggets that I'll ever drop. And it doesn't matter whether you're on the investment side, the real estate mm -hmm. side, any of that. If you help someone, especially when they're at their absolute lowest, because let's be honest, if they're in a financial position of needing a short sell, there's some major heavy stuff going on in their life. But if you help them at that point, you have a walking, talking billboard for the rest of your life or well, for the rest of their life anyways, of Oh my God, go talk to Matt, go talk to Ingrid, go talk, go drop, uh, go talk to Carolyn. Um, it's like, I can source one client that I did a short sale for in Maricopa, one. I can source over $300,000 in commissions from that one client. And like, they've only bought, they've only bought three homes with me. So like, think about how many times they've referred me out, like a lot. And I'm grateful for it. And the cool thing is even on the investor side, sometimes what happens is people will, you know, it may not be a situation where it makes sense for you to acquire it. And it's like, okay, let's just do right by them and let's just get it short sold and let's get it done and get them into a better spot. The amount of times that I see that happen and then say two months later, Oh my God, my mother's brother's uncle's aunt just passed away. She's got a hoarder house. I immediately thought of you. Will you go look at it? You know, like I, I want you mm -hmm. to go buy it because you did me right. The amount of times I've seen that, like it's, it's insane. The amount of repeat business that you'll get from doing the right thing for people. That, so this leads me into another question. Okay. How do you sleep at night? Is it like, you're just like, I've helped so many people. You're really relaxed. Like, does anything keep you up? Cause I feel like that would feel not only my bank account, I'd feel my emotional cup. I love like service is one of the, I love helping people. And I've done it so much to where I'm like, okay, I'm drowning. and I'm not focusing on my priorities, but I feel good helping others. 
Yes. And that is exactly where I'm at as well. Like I, Ingrid's known me a long time. Like, I mean, like a long, long time. Um, and there's some parts of me when I was in high school, like everybody, like I wasn't probably the most upstanding person, but I was still like a good person. Mm -hmm. But once I got into the short sale business and I understood, and this was the number one thing that I, that I immediately took away from it. If you take care of the people, the profits will come. And it's, Ooh, I, like that. I, I, that's literally actually our, our business model for our uh, real estate group, because I don't care if you need to sell a $30,000 trailer, I'm going to help you. Um, I don't care if you need to sell a $3 million home, I'm going to help you in any situation in between. And like, for sake of the story, going back to like our short sale heydays, mm -hmm. dude, I'll be honest, we short sold land out in Arizona City for five grand where we got a $50 check and it was split between four people. <laughs> so we got $12.50 for six months of work. But That's you know what? You money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like literally like Nicole would be like, yo, we got paid today. I'm going to hit Taco Bell number seven <laughs> on the drive through for you. I'm like, let's go. Like, let's party. <laughs> get and all like, the extra hot sauce. Exactly. Like get the extra mild sauce. Like I need to drink that because I don't have food for the next three days. But it was, you know, it's one of those things where, like you said, when you come from that place of service, like the cup will always be full. Like it will be full. And the other thing is like, for me, I guess at the time, maybe I didn't realize this, how much this actually will impact someone's life of mm -hmm. getting them out of that really sticky situation. Like to me, like I always kind of had the blinders on and like, I'm the product of two engineers. Both of my parents are engineers, how I developed a personality. I have no idea, <laughs> but I did, but like, I look at everything very logically and methodically. It's numbers to me. Like I, mm -hmm. I try to not see the emotion because if I get caught up in the emotion, I may not do a good job. And like, I, like I, my wife is definitely the emotional side of our, uh, of our team. And I mean that in like a 100% love way of she takes on that part. So I can take on the numbers part and between the two of us, we'll get it to the finish line. That's awesome. Well, thank, I thank you. Ingrid, I'm going to give you this floor now because I've just been jumping in before you. Do you have any questions for him? Man, I, I'm ready. That, that I, I would say um, for sure, if, if you're just looking to serve, the, the profits will follow. Um, speaking of profits, you know, these hedge funds, they'd be profiting. <laughs> they'd be profiting. <laughs> just <laughs> so, a scotch. <laughs> if, if we could kind of lean towards that. So um, there has been, you know, the hedge funds, wiped out so many wholesalers last year it's yes. interesting because uh you know uh you you figured out whose uh business model was aligned with that and um and definitely aligned with flippers too who who just couldn't buy uh you know so it's, it wasn't necessarily hedge funds but we were definitely selling a lot to hedge funds so um from your perspective, how have you worked through that? Did you have to work through that? Are you pivoting? Like, I don't know how much business was through hedge funds, but. Um. So for us last year, we sold, I think, 180 to our hedge fund clients last year. Um, 180 year, properties? Yes, 180. And that that was all um, Maricopa and Pinal County. Um mm -hmm. We ended up doing, I think, 15 or 20 also in uh, Atlanta and North Carolina because I'm licensed there, too. Um, mm -hmm. So the hedge funds did really good. The year before that was the banner year because, you know, everybody was buying everything. And mm -hmm. we did on MLS um, acquisitions for one of the largest ones. And we ended up doing, I think, 474 transactions that year with them. So, like... Wow. We, we, we were part of the problem. We, we were. Um, but the thing that's interesting about it is they're still there. They're just a lot more subdued at the moment. But for example, I'll literally give you a perfect example. While we were on this, I ended up getting two offers to submit. 
And these aren't terrible offers like list price 350 offer price 337. That's not a bad offer in this market. Like hell, that's actually a pretty good offer. Um, another one was 325 uh, list price, 315 offer price. Like, okay, again, like not a horrible offer. So they're still there. They're in the background. They're, you know, I would say this year we'll probably end up doing like 100 deals with them, at least in Maricopa and Pinal County, as it sits right now. Like something may change in Q3 where all of a sudden they look at it and they're like, look, we need to be doing 40 a month again. And I don't know, there's like a part of me that would love that. And then there's also a part of me that's like, oh my God, like that's 40 a month again. Like I have to ramp up and be in that, in that spot. Um, the one thing that I have noticed, and this was going to happen no matter what, they've gotten a lot more picky. They won't just buy it. You know, last year it was, if the house had four walls and even some semblance of a roof, they were like, yeah, sure. Full asking 10 K above. We don't care. Now they're a lot more strategic in what they're purchasing which yeah. is smart. Like it is like, it, it's smart. And we work with several of them that buy here and then also nationwide. And they're very strategic in their acquisitions right now. That would definitely be the word I would use for it. Interesting. Um, so when you're having to work through 40 files, I can't, I can barely work through like two. So a month, like when you're working through 40 files, like how big is your team and like how, like what are some of the key systems you must have in place for you to, to actually work through that many transactions? So here's the thing that's probably going to blow your mind. Don't say the, it. The highest month that we had was, I want to say it was July of what, 21? Yeah, it was July of 21. Um, we had 72 uh, transactions that were closing that month. The only people were- Wait, time out. You had 72 yeah. transactions happening within 31 days? Yes, correct. How big is your team? Well, the team that handles this or my team? I, bo I guess both. Tell me both. Because now I'm so, like, what? So my, my actual team of agents and everything that are directly linked to me, um, we have seven people. And that's at Real Brokerage? That's at, Re that's at Real Broker. And then okay. we have like our network, which is the family tree. And there's like 75 agents in that. But the, the hey, this is one of them. This is one of my favorite ones, by the way. Um, so, but for, our hedge, <laughs> but, but for our hedge fund deals, it was literally just me, my wife, and my transaction coordinator. That's it. Three of you managing 75 deals in one month? Yes. And you have 17 children? Dude. <laughs> Pretty close, yes. Holy smokes, man. Yeah. So yeah. The, the cool thing on that is I'm very systematic, which is why I've done so many short sales is because I've created a system for it. It's the same thing for the hedge fund. Like literally when they reached out to me and they were like, yo, we want, do you want to do a bunch of transactions? I was like, okay, like who doesn't want to? Um, Within 24 hours, I already had everything pretty much down to a science, like signing docs, template emails going out to listing agents, follow up text with like a shortcut where literally like I just text like uh, I think it was HFO for hedge fund offer and it would automatically put a, a giant text in there yeah. and then boom, I just send it out. Like I'm old school, like I do it myself. I yeah. don't utilize like a podio and like, again, not a knock on anybody that does. It's just for me, that's what works a little bit better. And I feel it gives that personal touch mm -hmm. versus like it comes over where it's like, hi, attached is the LOI. Like yeah. that, like people get that. And sometimes they even think it's spam and they're like, eh, mm -hmm. all right, I'm not going to read it. Whereas like they get that and then they get a text from me five minutes later. That's like, yo, like, Hey, I'm a real person. And then they respond back and I'm texting with them. So when I started working with the one particular fund, they gave me like five offers the first day. And then by like day two, I already had three of them under contract. And they were like, wait, how the hell are you doing this in the current market? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. I just talk to the people. Like I talk to the people, we put the terms together, it works and we push it into escrow. And then once it went under contract, 
Marissa is my transaction coordinator. And like, I absolutely love and adore Marissa and she is amazing. She literally, she's like, we're going to be doing a lot of deals, aren't we? And I'm like, yes, ma'am. And she's like, I'm here for it. She's like, okay. And she had like 18 templates already made. And wow. like for every part of the process, here's the CBS code for the inspection team. Here's your accepted Binzer email. Here's your final walk email. Like, I mean, she had all of them in place and then it was just boop, 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 boop. And like, she just moves everything right along. Even like post-close, she's like, hey, congratulations on closing. We look forward to working with you again in the future. Please make sure to do the following with the key. Um, you know, we'll see you on the next transaction. And that's just, that's how we roll. So like when the market was coming down in June of last year, June 13th, my Black Friday, I'll never forget it. It was a week before I took my family on like our first actual true family vacation of everybody. And I got a call from one of our hedge fund managers that day. And he's like, I need you to cancel all deals in the Phoenix market. And I was like, bro, we have like six that are closing today. And he's like, yeah, um, it's not good. And you have to cancel all of them. We're forfeiting earnest money on everything. We don't even care if it, it like just went under contract. And I'm like, how many deals do I have? He's like, I show 85. And I'm like, oh, okay, mm. this is really going to suck. And you want to know what happened? I personally called every single one of those agents and I told them and I said, look, this is not a reflection on me. This is just what you're going to get this across the board. It's not just going to be me. It's going to be everybody. And like, of course, several of the agents were super pissed, but, and rightfully so. I mean, if I were on the other side, I would be too, but every single one of them to this day, I still have a good working relationship with them. Yeah. Just what? from that have a relationship with them you actually yeah. picked up the phone it, it's been interesting because um first of all not just the short sell king i think you you have like a, a a systemic kingdom over there by the way you're you're more than welcome to invite me and caroline to go check out some um go check out your house if, you're, if you want to you know you keep posting shit your 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 wife cooks I, I would love a dinner invite, you know. Yo, I'm, I'm, so, you know, I'm in the process of like literally ramp it, ramping that up. No joke. I am. I've, <laughs> I've been getting her more comfortable with it. She's like, people seem to really like, like tonight she's making, what is it? A chicken stir fry. And oh, I was I, like, where do you live? I'm in Gilbert too. I think we're in the same. That's my favorite kind of meal. Huh? Yeah. Like she was like, she's like, Hey, what do you feel about like a chicken stir fry tonight? Like all, you know, like all this. And I'm like, knock yourself out. Sure. How like, does she up. have time to cook? You have to get through 85 transactions in a month. I, she, she is extremely good at what she does as well. And the thing that I love about my wife, I, a lot of times I'm the face of the business. Like, okay, fine, whatever. And a lot of partnerships, that is the way that it is. Sure. She keeps everything very, very smooth on the back end, though. Like, she does. She makes sure, like, for example, one of our deals, I'm not exactly the best friend with the agent. And that's okay. Like, it is what it is. She, on the other hand, has kept the waters extremely smooth. Our seller is getting a great deal out of it. Everything's good. And I'm like, thank you for taking that off my plate. That, in and of itself, I'll go make 100 phone calls to generate sellers and do short sales and everything else versus that. Like, I know that my, I know that I'm not the best fit for that. And that's the other thing I like about having my wife as a partner. She's an amazing fit to, she's the yin to my yang. Like I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but between the two of us, like, if you haven't found what you're looking for, like, yeah, I, I don't know, man. It, it yeah, might not be you're enough. the problem. Not, yeah, not, exactly. Not yeah, that, that's you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, Ma it's not Matthew and Nicole. It's probably them. So that's freaking amazing. And I, I feel like, be, like we're going to have to have a dinner because I really yes. would love to understand, like, how we can, we can help you. Because um, I have to believe as you're generating all these leads and things happen like that, there might be a few crumbles in there that, that myself or Caroline can. 100%. Like I said, like in retrospect, like looking back on it, granted it was like two or three years ago, but that fourplex, like, holy crap. Like now I'm looking at it and I'm like, there's so many different ways that could have gone down that would have been a lot more advantageous, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. 
So let's see here, Matthew. It says, I actually have another question, not related to this one, but it is about what is eligible for a short sell. So okay. it says, Matthew, do you see a lot of folks who are in trouble with escalating interest rates on HELOCs? So I'm starting to see the first ripples, and I know you've seen this as well, Ingrid, with a couple um, things that we've texted back and forth on. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to see the slight kink in the armor, if you will, of the mortgages. And what I mean by that is, yes, your HELOCs, um, they're extremely, extremely high right now. Um, I mean, hell, I have a HELOC. There's nothing on it. But I think the interest rate to borrow on it right now is like 7.85, which is still a lot cheaper than a credit card. But it's still 7.85. It's not 3%. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing that the biggest thing that we're seeing right now, well, twofold, number one, and this is, I, I talk about this a lot, but it's something a lot of people don't think about the greatest generation, if you will, um, our parents' generation is coming to age. Like some of them are starting to pass away and that, you know, it's the cycle of life. It's unfortunate, but a lot of them took out reverse mortgages mm -hmm. and a lot the reverse mortgage it's not something you're going to be able to sub to you can't you know because well, can we have a lot of new people what is a reverse mortgage for everybody and i mean i have questions for the beginning so a reverse mortgage is it's called a heckum it's a home equity conversion mortgage so effectively say that you have a really low mortgage balance or you have no mortgage balance you go get a reverse mortgage and it's up to X percentage of the value that they anticipate it will be in, I don't know, 10 years or something like that. There's like a rule of thumb there. So what happens is they pay, you know, you draw on it kind of like a home equity line of credit and it just continues to go up. And then generally what happens at that point is the owner passes away and then the heirs either A, give it back to the bank or B, they short sell it. Or if there's equity, they'll just go ahead and sell it. What we're seeing is a lot of them ending up in the short sale space. Like a lot, a lot of them are. And a lot of people are like, well, why even bother doing that? Well, depending on the state, the delinquency, if you will, or the deficiency after they sell it could hit the estate. And if there's assets in the estate, like you don't want them taking away, you know, grandpa's truck or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe going and wiping out another property that they have that's free and clear. So a lot of times it's like, let's just do it, settle it, be done with it, call it a day. So we're seeing that. And then we are seeing the people that bought right when the market was kind of at the height that were doing 3% down mortgages, you know, conventional FHA, even VA, um, you know, the market adjusted. If you're, 10% down. And I think uh, you and I have been talking about one uh, over in Buckeye. I think it was uh, in grid where you were like, it doesn't like, no matter how I look at this, trying to wrap it, trying to um, sub to it, you know, whatever the payment was just too high with where market rents were at the moment slash even um, uh, mortgage payments for qualified buyers. I mean, mind you, this is a person that bought a year ago. They're technically underwater right now. Now, it's one of those things where, you know, is everybody going to be in that position? No. But you get onesies, you get twosies, maybe you get a, you know, a cluster of five. Okay, now you're starting to push people, push people through. And, I, you know, before I hopped on here, I just took a look in the tax records just to see. There's about 1,600 homes that show an active foreclosure right now in Maricopa County. Like, is that a ton? No, but 1,600 is 1,600 homes. Like, that's a that's a lot. Like, it. I'll tell you this: go look at a 1,600 home subdivision on a map, and you'll be like, "Damn, that's a that's a lot of homes." Mm -hmm. So, we are starting to see that, and we're starting to see it come through. A lot of it is in your areas where the market had risen dramatically and then it kind of softened down your Phoenix, your Atlanta, your Charlotte, your Vegas, um, parts of Texas We're we're, you know, we're seeing them there and fielding calls there. Yeah. Speaking of which, so let's say you're a flipper and okay. you got caught up in the, the, the dramatic change, right. Um, 
rates yeah. went up now meant the like the purchase prices went down because you were anticipating your property being worth 625 now you're lucky if you could sell at you know 570 so mm -hmm. um if you have a hard money loan on a property can you short sell those yes so we literally just got one done for a guy. Um, I think he was on, I don't know where he got my info, but he called me um, and he was like, hey, he's like, I don't know what to do. And it was a house in Pittsburgh. Um, the house had severe structural damage as well. So he was like, dude, I'm just, I'm absolutely toast on this. He's like, I'm in it like 250 on this hard money loan and this thing's worth maybe 50 grand. And I was like, yikes. Um, all right, let's see what we can do. So luckily, um, we got an agent in Family Tree that's over in New Jersey. And I was like, hey, I need you to list this. And he's like, deal done. Not a problem. So he went and listed it. Marissa did the short sale work on um, getting the paperwork and all that. She got everything handled on that. We got it into the lender on Thursday. And this is one of the things I like about hard money loans. They control their money. There's no seven levels of approval, like a Wells Fargo or anything like that. It's like, yeah, all right, it makes sense. We sent it in on a Thursday, the offer and everything that he was able to get. Um, we had an approval on Tuesday and we closed a week later. Mm -hmm. So like we ended up getting that one sold at 70, 70 G's. And the cool thing was the hard money loan or lender was grateful that they didn't have to go through the foreclosure costs and they didn't have to utilities and holding and you know all that fun crap they waived the remaining balance against him 180 g's gone and he wow. was like he's like dude he's like are you sure this is right and i'm like shut up and sign your docs bro like, just, <laughs> just close no, no. now are, are you seeing that here in arizona and the reason i ask is i actually have a flipper client who i do believe is going to have to go through that circumstance yeah. And, and the thing is, so that you know, and anybody else in Arizona, we have a relationship with a lot of the hard money lenders that are here in Arizona. So when the market kind of shifted, we actually initially had that conversation with them. And we're like, look, we're going to try to work some of these out and get them done. And they're like, hell yeah, just get to it. Like, absolutely. Like, let's clear the books and let's get in a good spot. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Good to know. I'm definitely going to put you on a text thread because I, yeah. I, do, I do think there's at least one property that they have where that's going to be a scenario. So, and then, okay. so let's talk about compensation. So when you're working these short sales, I knew, I know I get these questions. Um, so me as a referring agent, when I, I throw it over to Matthew, Matthew just sends me like a, a referral percentage. Um, but when you get uh, how, how do you get compensated as, as a short sell king when you have to go through these uh, transactions? So the way that we do it, because the last thing I want to do is jam anyone up because jamming people up, especially when you're dealing with the bank's money, like the banks have a lot more money than I do or ever will have because they control the money. So um, I make sure that I would operate 100% within how they need it done so that there's never going to be an issue. So the banks want the properties marketed on the open market. So what that means for everybody is we have partner agents all over the country through their family tree, through our brokerage, and then even agents that we've done short sales for them for 10, 15, 20 years, not 20, 15 years. Um, what we do with that is we just collect a referral fee from them. So we don't collect it from the buyer. We don't collect it from the seller. I don't try to charge it to the bank because the bank does not look kindly on that. And it's like, if the bank is already paying a commission, they're going to pay a commission no matter what on every short sale. And I can be compensated that way for my work. And the listing agent can be compensated for meeting the bank's requirements and listing the property a lot of times what will happen is if an investor brings it to us and says, Hey, I want to buy it. Cool. We're going to have our partner agent list it. You guys go ahead and get your offer executed and submitted and we'll get it into the bank and get you first rights towards it. Mm -hmm. And if the numbers work for the bank and they work for you, fantastic. If they don't, okay, we can retail it out, take care of that seller. And then, like I said, you're going to have a raving, uh, you know, walking, talking billboard 
for the rest of their life about how you help them out of this, you know, deep, dark abyss. So that's how, that's how we work it. And then ultimately, if we're not successful for whatever reason, uh, the bank won't approve it. We have one right now in Birmingham where the bank was like, the property condition is too bad to do a short sale. And I'm like, what the hell does that even mean? And they're like, we're not going to approve it because the condition is too bad. And I'm like, I'm going to work on this with management. But yeah, okay, that's a new one. Like, I've never heard that before. Like, that was really odd to me. I'm like, isn't that kind of the point of a short sale? Like, mm. the property's in disrepair or there's a financial issue. Like, why the heck would you just not approve it at all? Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. So <clears throat> I wanted to ask, I know we're, uh, we are actually at five o'clock. Matthew, I know you have all of your kids and you're going to have stir fry. Are you okay? My wife, hey, my wife's cooking dinner. We're good. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. So I don't even know. I, I was so excited to learn from you guys and, and uh, get invited over for dinner. I think we went so quickly into this. I'm not sure if everybody understands exactly what all the short sale is. I know it's, we're selling it at a discount from the bank. Um, so I guess the, the best way to say is the bank is willing to short it because they don't want to hold on to those properties. Banks are in the business of lending money at 400% or whatever it may be. So um, the whole point is like what you were just saying on that example why the heck not? Would you not give the short sale? Are you going to foreclose on it and take on this dilapidated property and just let it sit there and rot? Is that, is that kind of a conversation you have or you just wait and talk to management in that situation? So usually what happens, I've learned more often than not that if I just took the bank at its face value on whatever its first response is, I would never get anything done. Um, their first response is always, no. Eh. No. <laughs> yeah. or and we want more money or something like that or we want money from the seller because we think they have money so mm -hmm. i always every no gets me closer to yes with them so i'm like okay cool story all right i'll just try it a different way um so like with this one for example in birmingham there's i have a very good contact at this bank so what we're going to do is we're just going to go through them and be like look what is the actual reason why because to your point uh Carolyn, is the banks don't want to hold assets. It, it doesn't make sense to them. They make their money by pa by being a password mm -hmm. on, on lending. That's where they make their money. Mm -hmm. um, that's why the banks had to be bailed out when the financial crisis happened because they're not built as property management companies. They're not. So, um, you know, in this instance, the only thing that I can think of and – this and this may be it and this is kind of where you get in that like dark underside belly of lending there could be a stipulation in that property that if the or sorry not in that property in the loan documents that if that property falls into a certain level of disrepair mm -hmm. that they can sue the seller for x amount of money mm -hmm. and that could be what they're looking at but again how much is that going to cost you yeah, how long are you going to be in the courts? How much yeah. are you going to cost? Yeah. Yeah. Is the juice like, worth the squeeze? And for them, they're in the business of lending, not in the business of really? managing assets. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, and the other thing is, like, let's be honest, what news station isn't going to want to pick up? Like, hey, you know, uh, I don't even know what bank it is. Like, let's just say that it's Bank of America. I'm not saying it is. But, you know, hey, Bank of America is trying to beat up this home seller and, you know, suing them like nobody wants that bad press like nobody does so it's much better to just move it move it along and okay cool we've resolved the loan we're passing it off like our investors are recouping some of the money the best ass the best that they're going to get for the asset you know let's go ahead and get back into the business of lending money at 17 percent interest gotcha Okay, I tried to send it in the private chat, but it sent really weird. So I'm going to rattle off questions for you. This is going to be you your minute for everybody to get fast facts from you. So why do homeowners typically choose to short sale? Uh, to try to keep their credit intact and, or not have as much of a hit on their credit. Um, and also a lot of them have some semblance of like pride of, hey, like, I don't want to be dragged out of here by the sheriff, you know, after a foreclosure action. Okay, so a credit that can go into that can mess them up if they want to get loans or rent somewhere else if they have a short sale, it messes them up all together. Right. 
Kind yeah, of. short sale, four years bad credit, foreclosure, seven years of bad credit. Just think about awesome. that. Way. Short sale is only at three years now. Oh, only three. Yeah. Oh, look at us. Oh. A little caveat on that if you're a veteran, it's only two. two. All right. Good yep. to know if I ever want to go through that. I don't really want to, but <laughs> okay. I really hope that you never end up on my desk, but if you do, I'm here to help. <laughs> I appreciate you. All right. Let's go to the next one. Um, what requirements or what are the requirements for short sale? What do you need to be able to do a short sale? Um, we have a short sale application package that has to be filled out. Um, the biggest requirements that the bank's looking for is property in its current as is, is below the mortgage balance that's there. And also they're usually looking for some kind of financial or life event that has caused them to be in this uh, scenario. I call it like the four D's, death, divorce, disease, destruction. Those are usually the four, uh, the four caveats that you can look at that ultimately will um, be driving forces for, for a short sale. Gotcha. Okay. Is that available on, I'm on your Instagram right now. I was looking through that. Is that available on the link tree that's on your Instagram? And guys, if you're not following Matthew, you should be. This is his Instagram right here. Um, da, 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 da. There, there he is. is. All of the kids. Uh, he's missing a few on his story, but <laughs> right here. Um, nice so, <laughs> yeah. I clicked on this and that brought me to your link tree. Oh, I got to click over to share. So just click on this right here to fill out to get in with your yep. help. 100%. Beautiful. Look at all those. 300 five-star reviews. I love this. And then if people want to join your uh, family tree, this is where they go for the real bingo, group. Bingo, bingo. Get to hang out with Ingrid and you every, what do you guys do? A meeting every Tuesday? Every yeah. Tuesday, yeah. See, I'm Tuesday not even a real, yeah. I know it. I just see yeah. this posting about it. Okay, cool. Um, I saw that you threw a question up here, Ingrid. So we'll go to that and then I'll go back to my questions. Where'd that one go? Oh, um, can you short sale or can you wholesale a short sale? Ooh, okay, so this is the thing I'm going to tell you. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. Um, this is the one time that I will tell you it is probably not a good idea to wholesale something. The main reason why is the bank, and this is up for discussion and or argument, the bank will view it as mortgage fraud. And the number one reason why is if they're going to agree to 100000 and you have a buyer at one ten. That ten thousand is rightfully theirs in, in their eyes again. Mm. But here's the thing: more often than not, most short sales have uh, what's known as a deed restriction that will come with it. The deed restriction is for the first thirty days you cannot sell the property. Uh, days thirty-one through ninety, you can sell it for one hundred and twenty percent of your acquisition price, and then after day 90, 90, uh, you know, ninety-one on, they don't give a crap. You can sell it for whatever you want. Um, there are some lenders that will not have a deed restriction and they don't have any verbiage in there that is prohibitive of you doing a double close. I always tell people you might want to talk to an attorney uh, before you do that just to make sure because it's not me they're going to come after. It's not Ingrid they're going to come after. It's not Carolyn. Like it's you. So like just make sure the juice is worth the sweets. <laughs> yeah. But let's say a wholesaler – uh, finds a situation where um, cash isn't working, creative isn't working. Can a wholesaler work with you to refer that or how would that work? 100%. Yeah. So a lot of, in, a lot of investors bring us deals and then they'll even look at like buying it, you know, on a discount. And then a lot of times similar to what you, you do with JVing, they'll JV with somebody that's a little bit more experienced. And then after, you know, taking it down and closing on it, you know, whatever your JV agreement is, your JV agreement is. If your agreement is, hey, we're going to take it down and then in 30 days, we're going to sell it for 20% more and split the profit. There's nothing wrong with that. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that because you've adhered to the the bank's guidelines. Yeah. Okay. Right on. All right. Next question for you. What is the difference between a short sale and a foreclosure? So I think we kind um, of covered that, but I have that written short, down. Short sale is prior to a foreclosure happening. So, I mean, it's, um, it's resolving the loan before you effectively have the sheriff showing up to, you know, forcibly you. evict you. The other thing is it's a lot sweeter for you on your, um, you know, on your finances and your, and financially, like for example, when you go to apply for a loan, you know, three years down the line, you can go ahead and be in a good spot. The other thing that's kind of cool about it 
on that loan application, they never ask you, have you done a short sell? They do ask you if you've done a deed in lieu or a foreclosure. Gotcha. So that's one of those things where they look at it like a lot of banks are like, okay, your, your risk level is a little bit higher. Whereas if there's a short sale, it's like, okay, explain the situation. You try, you know, but you did, you did the right thing. And because mm -hmm. you did the right thing, we're going to be a little bit more apt to extend uh, credit to you. Okay. Um, how long does the short sale process take typically? Such a loaded question. So, <laughs> um, clearly off that hard money one we just did, it only takes a week. Um, but no, it usually we tell most people expect from, uh, the time there's an offer to the time that it gets closed, um, or to the time that it gets approved 45 to 90 days, depending on who the bank is and how much we go back and forth with them. Okay. Um, who pays for the short sale process? Oh my God. This is my favorite part. <laughs> um, so here's the beautiful part. Guess how much, guess how much the seller has to pay. Mm. <laughs> Binoculars. <Zero. laughs> seller pays zero buyer buyer. In addition for that pay, doesn't pay anything additional either. Oh. So it's literally the bank approves all the closing costs. And that's the other thing that's kind of cool. Just as like a small caveat for people that are uh, on the investment side that are looking at the deals. Cause I know a lot of times we'll do like, Oh, buyer will pay all closing costs to try to make you know, a deal look a little, a little bit more advantageous numbers wise on paper with a short sale. They're already paying the seller side of closing costs. So like you're not incurring that. And you know, depending on the situation, it might be a couple grand you know, maybe even three or four grand. So, you know, kind of, kind of a nice little, uh, nice little push to the bottom line right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's good to know. Um, um, I have, I have, I have one. What if somebody is in pre foreclosure, but short selling is still an opportunity? Is that something? So let like, I, we come across those as wholesalers, mm -hmm. right. And, um, we have people in pre foreclosure when we look at their deal, like the Buckeye property, right? Like, yeah. It, it, it looking back, I probably should have asked, Hey, maybe we should just go through a short sale process on this one. Um, what are your thoughts in, um, uh, how that works? Pre foreclosure. I always say the sooner that we can get in contact with the bank, the better, because when you're running up against the trustee sale or, you know, whatever it's, it's not to say that something can't happen, but I mean, it's gone down substantially, like your likelihood of success has diminished substantially. So if they're in pre foreclosure or a foreclosure sale date was just posted, a lot of times those are the best ones to get going right away because the bank has adequate time to work through their process. And while it's still stressful, it's a lot less stressful than like, Hey, this goes to for like, I had one guy that was like, Hey, this goes to foreclosure in like 20 minutes. And I'm like, Oh, me, like, <laughs> I'm good, but I ain't that good. Like I, yeah. there's nothing I can do at that, at that moment in time. So like the sooner we can catch them uh, and, and um, you know, get working with them and get working with their bank, the better chance we have of success. Just a caveat for, or just to add on to this for everybody. If you, and I saw some people like, can we talk about reverse mortgages? If you're just jumping in, he just said 10 minutes ago in Maricopa County, there are, did you say 1600 foreclosures 16, happening 1600. 1600 this month in maricopa nationwide i mean there's a bunch so these people at the bank are overwhelmed already trying to help everybody and i this was going to be one of my questions at the very end but would you rather have a bunch of information or would you rather have relationships matthew and i think we already know your answer based on 100%, what you've done 100 percent, i will take relationships i i, I will it's relationships re all day relationships so are are key to everything like they are. And it's like, we, I mean, you have to think about it. We literally laid 15 years of groundwork for this. And like, it's, I got laughed at by people that were like, Oh, like literally like big name realtors here in Arizona, like in 2013 and 2014 that were like short sales are like gone. Why would you still focus on those? And I'm like, they will always be there in some facet. Mm -hmm. And if I can operate in that niche and nobody else has the knowledge or wants to, I'm going to do great. Like, I, like you can go sit there and you can go, you know, do your luxury shoot at your paradise Valley house. 
and I'm just going to be over here just in the trenches working with people and I'm going to be in a good spot. So like, I will, I will take relationships a hundred times out of a hundred. And you already said this, if you had a good relationship with the law firm, it might help speed everything up. So guys, relationships with your bank, relationships with the law firm, relationships with title agent or escrow agents, title officers, everybody, it's going to help you move things along a lot. You, do you own a title company? I mean, you alone would be running a whole title company. I do. <laughs> What's I your do. title company? So I have a, uh, we have a, a Magnus East title. Um, so we utilize Magnus East. And then one of our clients has their own escrow division at a nationwide uh, title company because they do so many transactions. Like literally like there's like 10 escrow officers and they just do, I'm, I'm like, no exaggeration. I think it was like last year or the year before they were doing like 2,500 deals a month. And I was like, man, how do y'all sleep? And they're like, we don't. And I'm like, good for you. I'm like, I'm go talk to Marissa. I'm going to go back over here. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. So now uh, we're going to just have to be doing all our paperwork through uh, Magnus that at least build a relationship with our short sale king. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, next question I have is can a homeowner a short sale if they have multiple mortgages? Heck yeah. Absolutely. It's just a larger, it's just, it's money. going from a, it's going from a 250 piece jigsaw puzzle to a 500. That's all that it is, but it could, it can be done. Um, even if there's an IRS tax lien on the property, I'm really good at getting those to go away for $0. Mm, fantastic. Okay. Yes. I very, like very interesting. Very, very little like caveat that most people don't know. Okay. Uh, well, then I'm, I'll ask my next question. Have you gotten rid of, can you get rid of almost, how many liens? Like, what is the craziest lien you've gotten off of a property before? Um, craziest one that I, so I will tell you this. There's actually two lien, or well, there's one lien, 100%, absolutely, can never be released off without full payment. And that's a child support lien that they will not release them. The state, the state won't. If you see a child support lien and it's a short sale situation, the deal is toast. Like they're like, I've tried everything under the sun. It won't happen. Um, the craziest one that I probably gotten off was a two and a half million dollar, um, uh, business, uh, loan, like literally like a business loan. And it was defunct. And this was on like a 300 K property. It's not like this was like, a $10 million property or anything. Um, mm. But that one um, I was able to get off. And then I also just, I think it was last year, maybe um, we did one that was up near Anthem, not quite Anthem though. And she had four loans on the property. Um, she had uh, four loans on the property and one of them was also a business loan and it was for like 750 K and the, the business gal was super, super nice. And she like called me and she's like, hi, so we're in like fourth position. And um, how much money do you think we'll get? And I'm like, uh, the bank's going to give you like a G. And she's like, cool, here's my approval letter. And I'm like, okay, thanks. I appreciate you. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's so yeah. cool. So it was, that was definitely one of those where like afterwards, I'm like, Marissa, are you pranking me? And she's like, no. She's like, dude, it's legit. And I'm like, cool. Well, I've also heard um, that when it's your homestead, meaning your primary home, especially in the state of Texas, you can actually take a lot of those judgments off uh, other than your IRS lien um, because mm -hmm. they can't they can't judgment your primary home. So yep. I've learned and that the hard way with a couple with a actually not the well, sort of the hard way uh, with a property I'm trying to sell out there. So interesting. Yep. And the homestead like. I mean, I've sold a lot of properties where I've had creditors that are extremely upset at the fact that I know how Homestead works. And they're like, well, you know, we're just not going to release. And I'm like, yeah, except it's homeowner's primary. We have Homestead exemption. So, like, it's not really up to you. And mm -hmm. better luck next time. And they're like, no, that's that's not right. And the title, you know, escrow officer is like, yeah, no, we're closing this. And we're going to indemnify the uh, transaction. It's not an issue. And I'm like, fantastic. Let's get it closed. So right definitely been through that. Um, you know, it's it's a little bit of a funky situation, but um, it's it's good to have that knowledge. It is. Mm -hmm. 
Fantastic. Well, do we have any more questions, Caroline? Well, you threw this one up on the screen. Um, well, the reason I put it up on the screen, because obviously we want uh, Liza to have an opportunity to go reach out to Mr. Matthew Potter. So does uh, anything that you may have not covered that we didn't ask that you think would be helpful? The only, I had one more for him that I didn't get up there, oh. so I'll throw it really oh. quickly. Throw it up, throw it up. What are the tax implications of a short sale lien? Oh, look at you. Okay. My last, well, I mean, my last question. I had to go. Hey, and you know what? You've literally touched on all, all of the things that everybody asks. Um, so I will start with this. I am not a CPA. Go talk to a CPA. <laughs> um, I cannot give you legal tax or credit advice. Now that I've given you that disclaimer, I can tell you this. Um, when the, There's two things that can happen with the bank. They can waive the deficiency balance against you or they can retain the deficiency balance. And it depends on the state that you're in. Arizona, we're a one action state, so they're gonna waive the remaining balance. Because they do that, and the dollar amount's generally more than $600, um, what will happen there is they're gonna issue um, a 1098. It's a cancellation of debt. You're gonna get that in the mail. You're gonna go talk to your CPA. The CPA is gonna fill out a form 982C and God willing, unless you like really came up on a lot of money that year that you short sold, it get, it gets wiped out. So that's that's what happens. Now, the flip side of that is because I've had several people that are like, I don't want the 1098. And I'm like, well, your other option is the bank keeps the deficiency judgment instead of being taxed on, say, there was like 100,000 that was written off. Now they're just going to collect 100,000 from you. So which one would you rather have? Do you want the tax at, you know, 12% on a hundred grand potentially, or do you just want them to come, you know, take payments from you for the next, you know, 30 years on a hundred thousand dollars. And more often than not, people come back and they're like, dude, I'll take the 1098. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, if folks want to get a hold of you, Matthew, um, I think Caroline went up there and put your, your Instagram, uh, yes, and, and, and they want to do business with you. So like Liza, for example, who needed the IRS tax lien support, how do they get a hold of you? Just message me. You can message me on Instagram. Um, like uh, uh, Caroline had said, you can go into my link tree and you can just click on nationwide short sale help as well. And it will come directly to me. Like it's boom right there. Um and it will come it will come right into my email box. I also give everybody my email as well because it's usually where I live the most. I'm not gonna lie. Um, so everybody can reach out to me um, at it's Matthew at stunninghomes.com. Hey, that's my old house. <laughs> <laughs> and I am so amazed at the fact that you can even have time to text me back considering how freaking busy you guys are. It's so crazy to me. It really yeah. is. It's what, it's one of those things. Like I always like, it's funny that you mentioned that because so many people are like, how do you find the time in the day? And I'm like, I, I just do like, that's just what I want to do. Like, I don't, like, there's not a lot of other things that I do. Like, I work, I spend time with my kids. Like, that's just kind of what I do. Um, but, I mean, I think the longest it's taken me to respond to you is, like, I don't know, like, a couple hours. And I think I was asleep the other night. <laughs> so, like, I don't even think that truly counts. But, um, but, yeah. but like I said, I mean, like, I, I really just love helping people get to their goals and what they want to do. So if there's anything that I can do, whether it's, you know, short sale, whether it's a hedge fund submission, whatever it is, I'm, I'm all here for it. That's, you know, that's what I want to do. And like, I even got a guy up in Nevada. I was like, look, I'm like, this hedge fund doesn't exactly pay the best. It's only 1% on the deal, but I'll split it with you. Like, if you're cool with that. And he's like, I didn't even have to put on pants today and I'm making two grand for like doing nothing. And I was like, Okay, so I assume that means you're good with it. And he's like, yeah, he's like, even if I did like, if I did five of these a month, I'm making 10 Gs. And I'm like, that's true. Like, I, I can't argue that. So like I said, I definitely, you know, anything I can do to help out anybody, 
by all means, let me know. That's what I'm here for. I love it. Um, I'm going to ask, I'm going to jump in here. So Matthew, if you could go back in a time machine at any point of your life, it doesn't even be real estate related. I'm going to end on some fun stuff. Okay. You could talk to yourself. You only have, let's say two minutes, two minutes okay. to give yourself advice. Any point in your life, when would it be? And what would you say? Probably I would go back to, I would go back to 2000 and four when I bought my first house mm -hmm. and I would tell myself, Hey, you've done really great. Like way to start out. Just know that the market is going to get like really, really nuts and just be prepared and like, just keep on the path that you're keeping on. And like, that's where I would be. Cause like, I, I look at it realistically knowing everything that I know now God, I wish I hadn't spent money on a bunch of stupid shit and I would have just been buying houses. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I I look back at some of the stuff I short sold where I'm like, when will I ever be able to buy a 3,000 square foot house again for $30,000? Like, it, it will never happen. It, it won't. Like, mm -hmm. you can't even get the materials to build that thing this the uh, you know in this day and age. So that would probably be it. Um the other, the only other thing that I will say with that, because that's probably my number one, but there's a very, very close, there's like a one asterisk as well. Okay. When I met my wife in 2009, uh, was it 09, 09, 08, 08. When I met her in 08, I would have told myself, don't be a dumbass. Just like, dude, marry her now so that you can start <laughs> building now. Like, don't wait, don't wait six, seven, eight, I think six years. We waited six years. We've been business partners for six years before we actually got together. That's funny. I was actually thinking he's going to tell himself to ask her sooner. <laughs> oh, I will. 100%. 100%. Awesome. Because like ever since her and I, like when we got together in business, like, all right, our business took off. It skyrocketed. It did. We're very, very good in business together. But like looking back on it, I'm like, dang, like, dude, I, I mean, I might have another kid, maybe another two. I don't know at this point. Um, but like, I also sit there and think like, man, that's six more years. Like that's six more years that I would have. And like, I, I mean, I love my wife. I love my life. I love my kids. Like, it's just, I wish I would have had that experience for that additional time. That's the only thing. Not even a regret, just kind of more a wish, if anything. Yeah. That's lovely. Oh, my heart, my heart is full for you. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, Matthew, thank you for staying on a little bit later for us. We would love to have you back on here again. I was actually thinking we got to set up that back area over here so we can have people right at where our rocking chairs are in the, by the pool, do some 100%. podcasts out there with everybody. Um, I was trying to find you. Do you have a YouTube channel at all, Matthew? I was looking for you. But I, I don't. Know. I haven't even started it yet. Right. Like, I'll be the first I'll one that I haven't started it. Oh. Like my, my YouTube game is weak. It is I'm weak. Going to make it for you guys. I put, again, you can see at the bottom of the screen right now, his Instagram is uh, Matthew Potter Realtor. Please follow him. We want to help as many people as possible. We want to help people not ruin their credit. So this is a free podcast. We have no sponsors, nothing. We just ask that you like the pod. You like our YouTube video, please subscribe, go give Matthew a ton of love. I'm going to throw, if you go to my YouTube, Ingrid's YouTube, you will see the links to uh, Matt's Instagram and you guys can follow him there. I will also post it on my Instagram. Um, Matthew, thank you. Thank you so much. Have fun with all the kids in the chicken stir fry. Absolutely. We'll be waiting I appreciate for a dinner invite. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will work on that. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for having me on. I had a blast and hopefully we'll be able to help some people. Yes. Love it. Thanks for explaining it with us. Bye.